And you're welcome. Hope you enjoyed that package by Tara Tara Fela Dorotoyin, I produced that during the International Women's Day series, and we did that to highlight some of the amazing work that women all around Nigeria are doing. Like I always like to say, women have a voice, and the voice should be heard, and they should be allowed to tell their story themselves. Now, speaking about women, a group of young women were kidnapped five years ago on the 14th of April, 2014, in Chibok area of Borno State. These girls and their families have been through hell and high water. And over the years, we've had different campaigns coming out to constantly push for these girls to return to us. Of course, we know the world famous Bring Back Our Girls campaign. Thankfully, some of them came back to us. But there's still some of our girls out there who need to come home. We need to keep telling these stories. We need to keep mounting pressure on government and systems to ensure that our girls are not forgotten. Now, one young man who has seen this and decided to make it into a story, and not just a an ordinary story, but the world's first virtual reality documentary is Kachi Benson. He produced the Daughters of Chibok, which should be premiering today, if I'm correct. And he'll be here to share with us his journey um, into producing the Daughters of Chibok and all that he, he got to find out during this process. It's a delight to have you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So you have the world, several people have done stories, you know, a few people have done stories on the Chibok girls. But this is the world's first virtual reality story about the Chibok girls. Okay, before we go into that, let's talk about how you got into virtual reality. Because now it's becoming a thing, but the most you know about virtual reality is how you go to the malls and you wear those, those Play the games. Yes, yeah. and then it's pretty scary, it yeah. looks so real. But how did you get into the world of virtual reality? Um, so, uh, a client of mine uh, wanted to make a, a virtual reality video for a product. And, you know, they reached out to me and said, hey, look, we want to want to do this, can you do it? I'm like, I don't do virtual reality. I don't even know what it means. And they were like, well, you know, just figure it out and uh, come back to us with an answer. And so I started some research. And uh, the more I researched about it, the more interested I became, like, wow, OK, this sounds pretty cool. And uh, because I couldn't go back and tell them no, I had to figure out a way to make it happen. And, and by the time I, 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 I got involved, I just fell in love. And for me, it was, wow, what a tool to tell stories. Speaking about it being a tool to tell stories, now you've used it to tell one of our one of our stories. It's a sad one, you know, but it's a story that we will never forget. I remember that at the time when it freshly happened, there was a particular newspaper that used to do the countdown every day, 300, and, 300 days gone, 301 days gone, you know. We had this countdown, but it does seem that over the years, it's been five years now, the families of those girls have not even moved on. A lot of them are still dwelling in this pain. At what point did you decide that this was a story you wanted to tell? Um, hmm. So I was making a documentary, another documentary, just regular 2D documentary um, in the Northeast. And part of my trip took me to Chibok. So I get to Chibok and I'm like, huh. So a lot of people have heard about Chibok, but people haven't been there. Okay? And I mean, when you say, well, I want to go to Chibok, you're like, are you crazy? Why do you want to go to Chibok? What's happening there? Uh, I mean, with all the stories of security and all of that. So I felt that not just to tell a story about Chibok, but if I can tell it in virtual reality, if I can take people there, see how they live, experience it for yourself, it's almost like you're there, it will probably be a stronger way of communicating that story. And, and that was it. So we came back, we grouped, shared it with my guys. I mean, they know that when I share it, I, I've already made up my mind. So it's, you know, and then we went back and, and made it. When you got to Chibok, the mm -hmm. first time you said, you, said you, you went through Chibok, yes. what was the first feeling that it evoked in you, the first emotion that it evoked in you? Well, considering all the stories that we've heard, first emotion is fear. Like, you know, you're worried, like, is this place safe? Am I safe here? But then you meet the people, and they're just regular people. They're really nice, they're friendly, very hospitable. And, and then you begin to feel at ease. You know, you begin to feel at ease, like, you know what, I mean, I, could, I, can, I can stay here for a bit. It's a very quiet place, very calm. You know, there's mountains all around, and it's, it's really beautiful. You know, so after a while, I just settled in, and, you know, we built the trust of the people that we wanted to film, and we just became friends, and, and that was it. Five years after the tragedy of the kidnap of the Chibo girls, the yeah. abduction, yeah. Do you, would you say that the people have moved on considerably? No way. No way. No way. I mean, the, here's the thing. There's no closure yet. So you don't know if, the, if, if your daughter is dead. And that's even worse. Do you get what I mean? You don't know if your daughter is dead now. So 
how do you how do you come to terms with it? How do you come to terms with it? So it's it's um, you you can sense that the community is sort of stuck in time. You know, you can sense that. Um, I went to the school, um, even though there's a mega school being built now, but there's a small section that still has the old buildings, you know, overgrown by weeds and all that. And it's just, it's like you're in a bubble, like, you know, like, it's just like you're stuck in time. I don't think if, I'm a parent, I, I, I don't know how I can move on if that happens to me, so, yeah. What was the hardest part of filming the documentary? I believe you had you came in contact with a lot of the parents and even some of the girls who had returned. What yeah. was the hardest part of filming this for you? Yeah, so there was this there was this day we were speaking to our main character, and you know we were just talking about Chibok, what's Chibok like, how she grew up there, and then I made the mistake of asking her if you could say something to your daughter. What would you say to her now? <laughs> I think in less than five minutes, everyone was in tears. Filmmaker, sound person, production assistant, the woman. It was just, it was just a mess. And, and, but it, it brought home, you know, it brought, it brought the fact very, very close to home that, look, man, this, this is real. The pain is still very fresh. I spoke to men who were crying, like men, fathers who had lost their daughters. You know, so, um, so yeah, it was, it was tough uh, having them recount the stories and then having to also have to sit down and listen to them say these things. But now you're going to lead every one of us who get the opportunity, anyone who gets the opportunity to see this. You're yeah. leading them through the story to experience the same emotions. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say you want to take away from anyone who sees the documentary? What, what, would, you, what would you say you want the emotions that you like them to take away. You know, this is really <laughs> already gets emotional for me. You know, how um, would you want them to feel when they're done seeing it? So for me, the biggest takeaway is this. Um, I cannot go into some visa to go and look for the girls for them. But I found a need while I was there. And the need is that these women, I mean the, the bulk of them are poor. They're farmers. They barely they can barely scratch out a living from the earth. And so I think at this time, yes, whilst there's a clamor for bring back our girls and all of that, we should also talk about the welfare of the parents. One of the parents made a very strong point. He said to me, he said, it's great. When these girls come back, you know, the ones that, have, that were returned, you know, they give them therapy, they take them back to school, you know, psychosocial, whatever, whatever. Then he said, but who is asking about the parents? That three of us have died. That your three parents have died. Who's talking to us? Who's asking us how we feel? Who's giving us therapy? Who's taking care of us? So, so for me, I think that's my own, that's what I would like for people to take away. That, you know, yes, the girls are still missing. We still need to talk about it. However, the parents are still there, the mothers especially, who still have other children to take care of, right? And someone should ask, how, how are you coping? So that, that's actually a valid point because we, we focus so much on the girls, which is very important. Yep. But then we forget that the parents are also traumatized by this experience yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. Now, um, let's talk about, before, before I let you go, how long did it take you to film the documentary? Well, well I mean, we, we, we made two trips. So in total, maybe about a week, seven days. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and um, you know, now that you're done with the whole process, when is it finally coming, when it's a, is it hitting, uh, when are you premiering it? I figured the initial plan was to premiere it today. Yeah, well, so, so we're, 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 we're having like pop-up centers uh, on Sunday. Sunday makes it exactly five, five years. Five years, yes. And um, even though we have a more elaborate event planned later in the month, but we just felt that, look, Sunday cannot just go by without us showing this. So we're going to have like pop-up centers around Lagos, okay. um, Falamore, some places, you know, people can just come. Wear the headset. Anybody can come and watch. Anybody. Oh, Just brilliant. come, wear the headset, and go to Chibok. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm sure this is something that all of us, a lot of us would like to experience, as sad as it can be. It is the reality of a lot of people in Boronu, in the Chibok era of Boronu State. And it's something that we should all be a part of. 
Kachi Benson and his team have put in a lot of work into ensuring that they help tell the story. This is their own way of fighting insurgency through storytelling. So there'll be several pop-up centers around Lagos. You can pop into any of them and just request to see, you know, to go to Chibok and have a feel of what exactly the situation of things are right now. How can people follow you on social media for more information on, you know, all this that's going on? Mm, yeah, I was yabbed. I'm not on Twitter, but uh, I'm on Instagram. Okay, so fair at, enough. At Kachi Benson, that's K-A-C-H-I Benson. So are you going to put our information about the pop-up centers on your Instagram? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that tomorrow. But okay. yeah, it's, 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 uh, I think there's, there's, some, there's some info around already. I'm working with a few friends. So it's just three locations, Muriel Kola Park, Paloma on the bridge and Alausa. Before I let you go, yeah. you're a storyteller mm -hmm. and you've always told very important stories. You started by telling the story of Bakasi and you know that did really well. And now you're telling the story of Chibok. We know that storytelling is a very vital tool for effecting change. We're mm -hmm. seeing a lot now that is going on with regards to, I'm sure someday somebody will decide, someday soon someone will decide to write a story about police, um, police brutality and you know, all the, the NSARS. I thought about it earlier today and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I've never made a documentary. So what would you say to a burden, a burden documentary filmmaker who wants to start out a project? What would be some of the helpful tips you'd give them, most especially projects that are geared towards social change? Well, I mean, two things. Number one, just do it. And if you make a mistake, learn from it and go do it again. That's Indeed. It. So do it, and if you make a mistake, learn from it and go do it again. I heard somewhere that failure is actually feedback. So it's something that should help you reflect and know what to do better. It's been a delight speaking with Kachi Benson. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. He's Thank a documentary you. filmmaker, and he recently did a body of work, um, The Daughter, Daughters of Chibok, and it'll be premiering on Sunday. There'll be, there'll be different pop-up centers around Lagos where you can get walk into, you know, get those, what are those things called? Those goggles. Like, v VR headsets. VR headsets. Thank you very much. <laughs> so you get the VR headsets and wear them, and this time around, Around, you go straight to Chibok and have a feel of what happened and what is still going on right now. And maybe that would actually spark something in your heart and remind you to show love and care to humanity. To enjoy more of this, our Ubonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.